you have uh, heard about the um, the revivals that are kind of going uh, with the youth around the country? Raise your hand if you've heard. Because if you haven't, you need to you need to know that something's happening. And uh, uh, the the one that's primary, I think that we we hear a lot about is the uh, Asbury. Uh, uh, revival. It's interesting because a hundred years ago, they had a revival at that school. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? A hundred years ago. Now they're having revival there. But it's not, it's not just there. Uh, it's actually um, <clears throat> flowing in many, many different places. Um, uh, Lee uh, College is another one, and there, there are others. Uh, where the Spirit of God's just moving really upon on young people. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, you know, um, and, and I, was, uh, I just got a, some information about um, a, uh, a, a, a college group that's on campuses all over America, and God's moving in, those, in a lot of those, uh, in those campus uh, settings with, with young people. I read about a junior high school. It's having prayer meetings. Hey, I don't know whether you know it or not. Something's happening. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and I'm excited about it because I, I like what my friend Mario Morrill said. You know, he said, well, you know, everybody is, you know, compl- saying, well, this isn't really revival. Or this is this. And they're being critical of this. He said, you know, you just need to rejoice with whatever's going on because when the river rises, it lifts every boat. Amen. 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 And uh, so I want to talk to you a little bit uh, tonight uh, in regard to this. Uh, you know, uh, any kind of move of God is not just for one group. Amen, right. and it, that's just not the way God works. And um, it's interesting because the Bible talks about the rain, you know, the former and the latter rain. I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight. But... Um, uh, over in the Old Testament, it talks about God prophesying that there would be rain in one city and people from another city that was dry would go to that city. You know, and, and I don't think we have to do that in today's, I believe God can rain on everybody. Amen. Amen. Now that doesn't mean he will because it, it depends on the hearts of the people. Amen. Amen. But I believe it's coming. Amen. I've been praying for it for a long time. I believe it's coming. I'm not, not only to this church, but to Shreveport, Bossier, in the surrounding areas. And I believe we're going to see God do some great things. We, we've heard words over that for many years. And we've, had, we've experienced sometimes when the Spirit of God just really moved in, in, in a great way. And uh, so I just want to talk about it a, a little bit uh, tonight. Uh, but I'm amazed at how people want to categorize something and they want to put their take on it and, you know, and what they think about it. And, and people are going there, not because they're hungry for revival, but just to see what it is. It, you know, it's an old expression, just looky-loos. You know, they just want to just want to look and see and see if they can find anything they can be critical about. But, but that's not, listen, that's not the way God works and not the way God operates. And neither is it ever, anytime you have something like that happen, is it ever going to be perfect? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And uh, nor, nor is it going to be something that, that will satisfy um, a hardened heart. The only thing that can satisfy that is a breaking up of that heart. Amen. Uh, so you've got to be careful about opinions. Well, they're not of our camp. Well, they're, they're Methodist. They're Methodist. Well, it's interesting because I remember years ago, golly, long, many years ago now, my grandmother came to church with us, and, and I, I'm convinced that she probably wasn't the only one, but she was one of the major people that prayed me into the kingdom. You know, she just, she just was a prayer. But anyway... She came, I think it was for a baby dedication, if I'm not mistaken. And, and, and I was praying for people that day, laying hands on people. People were falling out in the spirit. I mean, just right there on, on the floor. And uh, so I was kind of concerned about what she'd think about that, you know, because she was, you know, she'd been 
you know, in the Baptist church, you know, for many, many years. In fact, she worked in the nursery uh, until she was 92, I think, at the, at, and served at her church until she was 92. So after the service, we were in the back, and I said, you know, kind of got in a little quiet spot where I could talk to her. And I said, well, Mama, what would you think about that service today and all that stuff? And she said, you know, it reminded me of my Methodist days. We used to do that all the time, and we used to shout and run, and I don't know what happened to them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So you got to be careful how you compare things and how you judge things because you don't, you don't know. Uh, some friends of ours, Becky and I, been longtime friends, Dennis and Vicki Burke, uh, uh, she posted a thing that I saw online that, you know, that I thought was really cool because uh, she got saved back in the, in the uh, initial days of the charismatic movement. Actually, it was a movement of youth in California and uh, surfers and people on the streets and that kind of stuff. And they just swept in um, to the kingdom of God and the churches didn't want them. And there, uh, the Calvary Chapel, which is a really a worldwide uh, uh, church now, that pastor said, I'll take them. And I mean, he just had, just had revival in the church. Well, the point was that Vicky was saying, you know, don't tell me that revival doesn't last because this lasted in me all these, all these years, you know. Well, they're just having an emotional time. Oh, no, they're not. God's, God's touching people. Amen. So you have to be careful how you approach things when the Spirit of God starts moving because it's, it's not there to please you. It's not there for you to feel good about and feel like you're, you're the perfect person to judge it. Amen. You can't compare it with someone else. Uh, 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 you have to compare it with the work of the Holy Spirit. Well, you can't look at somebody and say, well, that's just crazy. That's just foolish what they're doing. Well, just compare it to the work of the Holy Spirit and leave that person alone. Yes. Amen? Amen. Uh, let, me, let me tell you, say another thing about this. Uh, uh, Revival is not a destination. Yeah. 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 Amen. Now, I do believe you can go somewhere and catch something and carry it somewhere else. I've seen that happen over the years more than one time where the Spirit of God's moving in one place. Somebody go there, and I mean, they get touched, and they go, and they just bring the fire somewhere else. Amen? Uh, but but the, the, it's not a destination. Uh, several times I've, I, over the, the course of my life, you know, in, in ministry, I've seen God moving in, in, you know, in churches, and it becomes a destination. Well, it, it you know that's that's really not that's really not what God wants. I, I've noticed some, sometimes God will do something in the church, and all these people will just flood into the church and just kind of push the membership out. Well, when everybody leaves and goes back home, the church is empty. So I don't believe the Lord wants that either. Amen. So you just have to be careful. Um, and, and I've experienced this a, a couple of times, but a number of years ago, there was a real move of the Spirit of God just with the joy of the Lord. And um, I, I, a lot of people were really critical of it. Yeah, that's not, that's just foolish. That's crazy, I, 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 all this stuff. But it was real. And, and it actually started, in our, not the movement didn't start, but it started in our church on a Sunday morning when God started dealing with me about worship, and and um, and and the Lord just spoke to me and showed me, and I've told this story many times, but just spoke to me and showed me uh, my own self about worship, and that I really wasn't a worshiper. And um, and I can tell you this: you're not going to have revival without worship, because that's where the presence of God comes. Okay. Anyway, so uh, we had a we had a, a Sunday morning service where the Spirit of God just fell in the service and people started laughing and got the joy of the Lord in their lives. Really, some of them just got inebriated with the Holy Spirit. I mean, they were just, we had, we had uh, a, a group of ladies from the church go up to Taco Bell over there on Pines Road one after a service one and they were just, they were just flying high. I mean, the Holy Spirit was, I mean, they barely could get there and when they went in there, 
uh, the Spirit of God came on the whole place and they prayed for everybody in the building. God touched everybody in, in the Taco Bell. I call that revival. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so you, you, uh, you have to be careful about it, but I remember that and, and remember those services and a good friend of mine, um, uh, Pastor Frank Bailey from New Orleans, uh, I, I never forget because we've been friends. Frank and I have been friends for forty for a long time, forty years, and uh, been good friends. And and uh, uh, I remember him saying one time we were at a meeting and they were laying hands on people and they were falling out and just laying there on the floor out. And the power guy he said that didn't real. Nobody that that's not real. That's not. I said Frank, you better be careful. Usually when you start criticizing something, you get. So he called me and said, hey, I heard about this guy named Rodney Howard Brown. And he's doing a meeting over in uh, 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 close to Dallas. And uh, I don't want to go by myself. Would you go with me? So I said, yeah, I'll go with you. I'll go over there with you. So I went with him. And, and uh, it was uh, really when Rodney was just really start, starting in, in, in what God had called him to do and and uh, but the had a tremendous crowd in in the building and and uh, the moment I walked in there and they started worshiping I said this is the same thing you just recognize it by the spirit you know when something's real now I have been places where they called it revival and I walked in I said nope this is about that guy on the platform right there amen but I, but I, I recognize it was real, and you've got to, you've just got to know in your heart, and if you've got a hunger for God, I, I would rather kind of miss it a little bit on that side, than I would miss something God was going to do. Amen. Not be just because I can tell you there were some wild things that took place during that time that some people would just think they just totally crazy. I remember when Rodney uh, was here at the church one time. And, uh, and uh, God touched this lady, and, and uh, she, was just, she, she was just full of joy, and then she'd cry. And, just, and Rodney was trying to talk to her, and uh, Rodney said, what's the matter? And she kept saying, I'm a clown. I'm a clown. <laughs> Rodney said, no, you're okay. You're not a clown. You're, doing, you're, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Nobody's judging you. She said, no, I'm a clown. Well, come to find out she was a rodeo clown. And she came dressed as a clown one of the nights during that, during that meeting. Now, you know, religious people, they, they go crazy about something. That, that just, but it, that turned that lady's life upside down. I mean, literally turned her life upside down. Be, be, because that's, she needed a breakthrough in her life, and, and it, changed, it changed her life, which, I mean... I could go on and on because I've seen the Lord do things, you know, in, in healing meetings. And I, I, was, um, I was in Russia uh, uh, one time and I was preaching with Dr. Lester Sumrall and I was preaching and the Spirit of God was moving. I mean, it was just, everybody in there was hungry for God and they were worshiping healing just broke out in the building. And, and uh, I mean, I'll never forget. I put my fingers in a girl's ear and it, only by the Holy Spirit in her ear, she was totally deaf, and God instantly opened her, opened her ears up. You know, so God can do whatever he wants to do, but I believe all he wants is a, is a worshiping people, the people who are hungry for God, and I'm getting off base here. But um, so, so anytime you have something like that, uh, a move of the Spirit like that, and it could be a move, you come to the Freedom Crusade, there are people who think that's a strange meeting. They don't even preach. A lot of times we just, how many of you gotten healed in a freedom, at, a, at a freedom crusade? Yeah, I mean, it's just amazing what the Lord does. Speaks to people, touches people. And uh, uh, that, I believe that kind of thing's going to get more and more common. And, and so I, I'm, I, but here's the thing. Uh, you, you need to know something scriptural, but it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. I know when this, the joy started falling, I mean, God opened my eyes to scriptures about joy I had never seen before. Didn't even realize they were in the Bible and, and the impact of just having joy in your life. It, it was amazing. 
Now, I, I did see churches that tried to make that a doctrine, and it, and it really hurt their churches. But, but, you know, you can have the flow of the Holy Spirit and, and, and still move forward in the kingdom. Amen? Amen. And, and let me just say something else, too. You can't promote a revival into existence. You can't advertise a revival into existence. It's by the Spirit of God. Amen? And, um, um, but you can destroy a revival by worldly promotion. And I've seen that happen too, especially when money's involved. So, listen, I, I'm, I believe that the Spirit of God's going to move right here in Shreveport, Bossier. I believe that the presence of God is going to be in this place as well as anywhere else he wants to be. That's fine as long as I'm included. And yes, that's selfish. But I want, I want, I want all that God's had. I don't want to miss anything. Amen. And so you have to put yourself in a position to receive. But um, here's something you can do right now. How many of you are hungry for that? Yeah, me too. You can't make it happen. You know that, right? But you can be ready for it. So here's, here's something you can do. Let me read this to you uh, in uh, Hosea chapter 6. Beginning in, I'm going to start in verse 1. I was going to start in verse 2, but sorry. I'm going to start in verse 1. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn, but he will heal. He has stricken, but he'll bind us up. Now, that's the old covenant, but, but that's what he's saying. Return to the Lord. That's the key ver- portion of it, right? Uh, and you say, well, I, I serve God. Well, there's a difference between serving God and really returning to where you know you need to be. Amen. We all need to face that, right? So notice what it says in verse 2. After two days, he will what? Revive us. How many of you, how, how many of you know that you'd like to be revived? Amen. Uh, that means that, that, that you can uh, have a quickening in your life that you haven't had in a while. There's all sorts of things that that can imply. But after two days, he'll revive us. On the third day, now this is prophecy, he will raise us up that we may live in the sight of the Lord. In other words, that reviving comes right before we're gone. Amen. And I'm telling you, that quickening is coming, and it's coming quicker than you think. It's a quickening coming quick. Amen. So it says after two days, well, you know, you go... Look at this, a year, a day is with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. So we're already at that 2,000 mark pretty much by any calendar you want to try to look at. Well, we need to use the Jewish calendar. Well, it's still pretty close. Amen. It doesn't matter what calendar you're using. Any way you look at it, um, uh, this 2,000 period we're living in is just, it's, it's just about done. If it's, you know, so we're, we're there. And so on the third day, it says he'll, uh, he'll raise us up. But it says after two days, he'll revive us. So that means there's something coming before we're out of here. Some of you, well, I'm happy for that. I'm sad about that. Well, just stay with it. Amen. But notice what else it says. Uh, it says, let us. No, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. So you have to pursue something. Amen. His going forth is established as the morning. In other words, it's coming whether you like it or not. Whether you're in it or not, that's a whole different ballgame. And notice what how he's coming. He will come to us like the rain. Like the latter rain and the former rain to the earth. Now, I, I'm sure I've talked about this before. Most of you probably heard this, but let's just rehearse it for just a minute. Um, anytime you have a harvest, so this is talking about harvest. Anytime you have a harvest, they need an early rain to get that seed growing 
in the ground and moist in the ground. But then right before the harvest time for that boost where the fruit really comes into blossom, you need a latter rain. So you need two rains. Well, I believe the former rain was Pentecost. And I believe we're about to move into the latter rain of the Holy Spirit. Now, just go think about the Holy Spirit and what happened in the former rain, okay? There, a small group of people praying, seeking the Lord, and out of heaven, the Holy Spirit comes. Really, the rain of the Spirit comes, and they're all filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak with other tongues. What'd they do? They left where they were and they went out in the streets. And that day, that day, 3,000 people got saved. Wow. But that was just the beginning. That was the former rain. They didn't, now listen, I know this sounds kind of strange. They didn't even have the structure in place to handle 3,000 people. They had to gather people that were elderly, that were older, that had a little wisdom about them to oversee people. And, to, and, to, and, to, and they had groups, small groups, that they went from house to house and, and they broke bread together and they had the same mind, the same heart. And they, they, and, and they, uh, they followed the apostles' doctrine because that's all they had. Listen, I'll just tell you right now, I believe by and large, I, I don't know about other churches. I, don't, I know about some other churches, but I don't know about other churches. I don't know how equipped they are, but I want to tell you something. I believe this bunch at this church tonight and Sunday as well, that, that if, if, if we have the opportunity, we can handle other people coming and ministering to them. Because nothing, nothing is going to happen by one person. Or one church. Do you know, listen, do you know that if, I forgot what that number was. Now, I think it was 10% of the population came to church in Shreveport and came to church. There wouldn't be enough seats in church for those people. Isn't that interesting? I know you're trying to do the math in your head. and Yeah. No, don't even know whether that's really accurate or not. But the thing about it is, listen, there already has been a former rain. There's coming a latter rain. And, and I believe it's going to sweep across the world. And we've already had some forerunners of that. You know, there was a, a great revival um, um, with, with a pastor named Seymour in Azusa Street. Back in the 1900s. And, and just out of a little bitty church building. A little bitty church building. Little bitty church building. The Holy Spirit fell. And God spread the message of the, of the gospel of the fullness of the Spirit to the four corners of the world. Out of that little bitty church. Amen. Amen. So if he can do that out of, a, out of that little church, how much more can he do with a spirit-filled group of people who are willing to do whatever it takes? I mean, listen, these revivals that we're hearing about, they're baptizing right now thousands of people in the Philippines. Thousands of people in the Philippines. The Arab world right now that is supposed to be closed to Jesus Jesus is appearing to Muslims all over the Arab world. It's not like one or two. It's, it's like a, it's happening almost commonplace. Something's happening, folks. This is not some little societal shift we're talking about to make America great again. This is talking about getting ready for heaven. This is talking about touching people's lives for revival so that Jesus can have the harvest that he wants. Well, well what is that going to look like? Well, Amos chapter 9, verse 11 tells us. 
a little bit about this. Listen to what it says. On that day, I'll raise up the tabernacle of David. That's actually talking about the last, um, um, we, we've had the Passover, okay? We've had Pentecost. All we have left now is the Feast of Tabernacles that hadn't been fulfilled. That's the Feast of Harvest. That's the Feast of Harvest. So he's talking about the Tabernacle of David, which has fallen. Now listen to this. And repair its damage, I'll raise it up in ruins and rebuild it as the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Eden of all the Gentiles who are called by name, says the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper. The treader of grapes, him who sows the seeds, the mountains shall drip with sweet wine and all the hills will flow with it. This coming a time where, where you sow a seed and the next thing you know, that person's saved. Amen. That's what the former and latter rain does. The plowman gets the former rain. The harvester gets the latter rain. But when they come together, man, that's a quick work. So all oh, things are going bad. Everything's about all oh, this wickedness. Hey, I was wicked. And I got changed quick. Don't look at me so holy. I know some of you, okay. But the point is, listen, this is going to happen, and this could be when it happens right now. Because this is not a denominational thing. This is not even a charismatic thing. But what's happening is that that supernatural sowing and reaping, the latter rain, the former rain together is starting to work. Ezekiel called it showers of blessings. I don't know about you, I like blessings. So what, what's our responsibility? What are we supposed to do? All right, listen to what it says in Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. Ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. Ask the Lord for rain. Somebody's got to start asking. Not just one person. I mean, son, there's got to be a heart cry. Lord, we want what's happening in these other places. We want it here. We want it now. We want it in us. It's who we are. We want it. We want it. Rain, rain, rain. If it is the time of the latter rain, which I believe it is, then why not ask? Why not ask? But let me read you the rest of this scripture because I want to show you something here. Ask the Lord for the rain in the time of the latter rain. Now listen to what it says. The Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain, grass in the field for everyone. One, one scholar said this about that verse, and man, it stuck with me. The Lord makes lightning in the rain. The Lord makes lightning in the rain. In other words, where you see these places where the Spirit of God, I believe that's just the lightning ready for the rain to come. How many of you ever notice that? You know, in Louisiana, we see it all the time. You look, in, you know, you look west and you see lightning. Oh, it's fixing to rain. Why? Dark clouds. I see lightning. It's fixing to rain. I never forget one time Beck and I were flying back from somewhere from, and we had flown through Dallas and we were coming in and there was a thunderstorm line. You know how they go. You know, just running all the way up past Texarkana up that way. And, and uh, we, the, we couldn't just come through. We couldn't land in Shreveport. 
So we had to fly alongside of that front all the way down. I think we almost went to Lake Charles. We went way south. But, but sitting on those, in that window, looking out that window, you could see it. You could see it. I mean, there was lightning popping everywhere, and it was dark. And by the time we landed, the rain just went whoosh. God turns lightning into rain. What's happening now in some of these places and things that are happening, I believe it's just lightning. God's going to turn it into rain. You know, lightning just hits one spot. Rain covers a big area. I believe we're seeing it. I tell you, I'm prophesying it. I believe it's happening because it's the word of God. And I believe that God's going to do it. Psalm 135 verse 7 says, He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain. And he brings the wind out of his treasures. Wind of the Holy Spirit out of his treasures. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. When lightning starts to strike, it's time to ask. I believe it's time to ask. We've got to make up our minds. It's time to ask. Well, I don't see anything happening here yet. Hey, I remember back when the Spirit of God was moving a number of years ago, that one of the schools here, one of the high schools here in town, the Spirit of God started moving in that high school. Okay, you were there. I'm telling you, it was, it was a move of God. I mean, those kids were asking each other, forgive them. You tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, it was a move of the Spirit. Started with repentance. It's a good place to start. I'm telling you, so don't, don't tell me we can't see God do something. In a moment. I mean, in the morning, we can get word. And I, I believe the Spirit of God wants to do something. So let me, let me just show you something here real quick. About out of time, so I, I want to I get to this. So listen to this. Over in, in 1 Kings, I'm going to use this as an analogy because I think it'll help you. In, in, in um, 1 Kings Chapter 18, I'm going to go back to verse chapter 17 because the Lord spoke to Elijah and said, just declare no rain. No rain until I tell you it's going to rain. So Elijah did that. But then over in chapter 18, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, Go yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. So he had to deal with that and, and about going to Ahab and all the ramifications, all that. I don't want to get into all that. But, but he said, all right, now, I've stuck my, le- uh, my neck out now. I said it wasn't going to rain, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. Now I'm saying it's going to rain. It's going to rain. So he told Ahab, verse 41 of chapter 18, he said, go up, eat and drink, for there's a sound of abundance of rain. I can hear it. I can hear it. I'm hearing it. Are y'all listening to me? I'm hearing the sound of an abundance of rain. I believe it's coming. If it's not already, it's already here. We just don't see it yet. So he told him that. And then in the next verse, it says that um, Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he bowed down on the ground and he put his face between his knees and said to his servant, all right, go check, go look. I'm going to just paraphrase this. What was he doing? He was praying. He heard it. He didn't see it. He knew it was coming, but he didn't see it. So what did he do? He prayed. What was he praying? Lord, I'm praying for rain. Lord, I'm praying for Lord, I, I'm praying. I hear the sound. I, I'm praying for rain. So Elijah prayed. And, and, and the servant came back and said, I don't see anything. He said, 
go look again. Came back, I don't see anything. You know, a lot of people quit praying. Well, see, I didn't think Pastor, he, he, he missed it. I, I prayed twice and nothing's happened. Seven times. Seven times. So he, come back, he came back the, the last time. Now listen to this. The last time he came back, I know he was trying to encourage Elijah because Elijah's neck's on the line. And he said, well, boss, I see a cloud about as big as a man's hand. Now listen to this, okay? That's all it took. Elijah said, that's it. You better get ready. We better get off this mountain right now because it is fixing to rain. See, I think sometimes we get discouraged or we lose, we lose sight of uh, what God wants to do, and, and we can't even see the cloud. And listen, if we have a good service, and I know all of them are good. I'm such a dynamic person <laughs> preaching, but no, I mean, we're, where the presence of God is in the service, and, we've been, and, and, and we know that the presence of God's there, and people are like, oh, well, that's, that's nice. No, that's a cloud. That's a cloud. Something is, 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 something's happening. It's a cloud. And so we've got to jump on these clouds. We've got to ask for the rain in the time of rain. You say, well, but that was Elijah. Well, let me read you a scripture. James chapter 5, verse 17 says this. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. It did not rain on the land for six months, three years and six months. He prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Listen to the Amplified Bible. Elijah was a human being. Last I checked, so are you. With a nature such as we have, with feelings, affections, and a constitution like ours, and he prayed earnestly for it not to rain. No rain fell on the earth for three years and six months. And then he prayed again, and the heavens supplied the rain. And what happened? What happened? The land produced the crops. There was fruit. There was a harvest. It didn't matter that there, now think about this a minute. It did not matter that there had been a drought for three and a half years. You would think, well, there ain't no seed in the ground anymore. There ain't nothing going to grow now. It's all dead. It's been three and a half years. Nobody knows why. It's been a drought. Everything's dead. It's a dust bowl. One rain. One rain. Rain and all of that seed exploded. Let me tell you something, and I may preach on this next Wednesday night. I'm not promising anything, but I might. There is generational seed in the ground that you and I have no idea what's going to come from that. You th you think that that. That somebody, well, you know, they, they lived a good life and they passed on, but their kids, they ain't serving God. They're just living like the devil. Well, that don't mean anything to God. You pour rain on that and that seed comes alive. God still looks at generational seed. My, my, I, didn't, I, I started looking into this, you know, with my, with my family, especially my, my, uh, my mother's side, uh, grandpa grandparents, and, you know, they were, they were preachers. Even my grandparents' parents were preachers. I got a Bible. I, I, I've had, I, I couldn't, I, I was going through some stuff and found this old Bible. Top of it was torn off of it. You can't read it. The print's so small. 
But it had my name in there, and I forgot the date, 1953 or 54, I think, somewhere in there. And it was given to me by my mother. Okay? Didn't have a mark on the Bible. I mean, it wasn't read. You could tell it hadn't been read because it was mine. But, there, but, but I found a piece of paper stuck in that Bible. And basically, here, here it was a list of things. This is what it takes to be a minister of the gospel. Somehow, somewhere, that seed was in the ground. And it got watered. You think about this. You think about all over the world, the seed of, of families and generations that have sown seed in it for the gospel and live for God. And you think that, well, those other generations, listen, God keeps up with seed. If you don't believe it, go read the Old Testament. I mean, constantly, you, all you read about is the seed. It's amazing what God can do. So here, it's, here it says that Elijah was a man. He was a human being. He was just like us. He prayed, and it rained, and it, that rain produced fruit. I believe we're in the time of rain. And it's time to ask. Ask for the rain. Listen to one more scripture and I'm finished. James chapter 5 again, verse 7. Listen to this. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. God is waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. You don't think Jesus died for us and was raised from the dead for us for a paltry little group of people back over in a corner somewhere holding on till the end. No, he wants the fruit. He wants the precious fruit. He wants the precious fruit. That's what it says. So the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. Now, are you ready for this? Waiting patiently until it receives the early and the latter rain. Until it receives the early and the latter rain. Listen to me. We're in that place right now. And I, I don't mean this wrong, okay? Maybe we're, maybe we're off by 10 years. Maybe we're off by 20 years. I don't believe I'm going to have to be 95 waiting Amen. for a move of God. Amen. But I'll be here if I have to. <laughs> but the point is, listen, even if all we get is the lightning, that's pretty good stuff right there. If it's just the lightning, if it's just that first pop before the rain comes. Hey, that'd be pretty good. But there's precious fruit coming. You think about that meth. Now I'm just using them as an example. Okay. That Methodist college, Methodist parents sending their kids to a Methodist college probably cost their grandparents put in them something to send them to that, not thinking they're going to get what they got. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now those kids whose probably parents, whose grandparents were called shouting Methodist, they're crying out to God. They're worshiping God. They're repenting. They're magnifying the Lord. People are being healed. People are being delivered. The love of God is there. And it isn't, it isn't some one little bunch or one little group of people. I'm telling you, he wants a harvest. Amen. Amen. All I can do is work in my field. How about you? 
Hallelujah. Well, look, we're going to pray over these prayer requests, and then we're going to pray, and we're going to ask the Lord. Amen? Amen. Father, we pray over these prayer requests, these that, that cried out to you New Year's Eve. Lord, we thank you for a supernatural working, a hunger in the spirits of the children. Father, restoration to you, a supernatural move of your spirit in their lives, healing, deliverance, provision. Father, whatever the needs are, we thank you that you're working. We don't even know all their names. We're not calling their names. We know you know. We lift these up to you. And Father, in obedience to your word, we see the lightning. We see the lightning. And Lord, we thank you for the rain. The reign of your Holy Spirit. Father, we don't want to go into eternity just doing church as usual. We want to see the rain, the rain, the rain. Lord, we ask for it. We're in the time of the rain. We're seeing the lightning. We know it's here. And Father, we sincerely right now, as your, as your men and women, you're children of God. We ask for the rain. And thank you for the mighty wind and blowing of your Holy Spirit. Blowing across Shreveport and Bossier. Lord, start in these schools. Start in these schools that are troubled. Start in these places where they say there's no way God could do anything here. Lord, let it, let it work. Let the power of God fall upon them. These neighborhoods, Father, where they say there is no God, Lord, show yourself. Show yourself strong. Oh, we magnify you tonight, Father. We glorify you. We thank you that you're our God. Oh, you're our God. Lord, we don't judge anyone for, for their lack. We judge ourselves. We thank you for a mighty working of your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One more thing real quick. I just really getting stirred in my heart to uh, do communion this Sunday. Um, actually, I had somebody ask me about that the other day, but, but I'd already, just something stirred in me. I just think we need, to, we need to receive communion this Sunday. Help me remember that, Michael. But we, we need to, I just believe we need to come together and have communion. Makes a difference. Makes a difference. Amen. How many of you are stirring up? Getting stirred up? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Follow that, David. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. But we know what to do. We pray for rain. Be looking for it and praying for it. And what else can you do? If you have a student, you can sign them up for camp in the lobby. If you haven't been uh, signed up for a freedom group or a, a small group, you can sign up for that in the lobby. Freedom groups are closed, okay? So if you haven't signed up for a group, you can still sign up for those except for freedom groups because they've already started and they are closed. It's great to be in the house of the Lord with you tonight. If you please rise. If you brought your tithes and offerings, the containers will be back in the back. Have a blessed evening and pray for rain.